If you're looking for a high quality 4K monitor for either Windows or Mac OS that will perform exceptionally well and last a long time, the Dell UltraSharp U2720Q just might be your pick. My assistant and I have been testing this screen for a few months now, and we're both very happy with it. By the way, make sure you're subscribed to my channel because I give away stuff like this Dell monitor all the time. My last giveaway was a brand new M1 MacBook Air. Now, I'm not gonna bore you with all the technical details or fancy benchmarks of this monitor. Instead, I'm gonna take you through some real life usage scenarios and give you my personal opinion on why I chose this as my main 4K monitor. Quick disclaimer, I purchased this monitor with my own money. This video is not sponsored at all and is entirely my own opinion. Here's a sneak peek at some of the topics we're gonna cover in this video. Starting with design, I have to be honest, this thing is pretty good looking. It's very minimal and clean with tiny bezels and no obnoxiously large logo. Look how small the Dell logo is at the front. The width of the screen is very slim and even the back looks nice. The light gray, dark gray and black color scheme means that this screen will fit in almost any environment. One thing I don't like, however, is how the input panel on the left side sticks out. It looks a bit bulky, but this isn't a huge deal for me, and the fact you get all these easily accessible ports offsets the physical drawback for me. Now, I went with the 27-inch screen size, as I found that's the perfect size for me. Smaller than that, and I feel cramped. Any larger, and I feel like I'm moving my head too much just to look around the screen. My advice to you, though, is always go a bit larger if you're unsure. If you think you'll be okay with a 24 or a 25-inch screen, try out the 27-inch, because I think you might prefer it. Now the stand not only looks good, but also has a ton of functions. You have a pretty wide range of swivel and the rectangular base is extremely sturdy and is great for storing things on or even just sitting on top of something. The sturdy base with wide range of swivel is paired with the arm, making almost any angle or adjustment possible. Just take a look at some of the different positions you can use this screen in. You can also take the stand completely off and mount the screen to a monitor arm via a visa mount. Moving on to connectivity, this is where the U2720Q shines and is the reason why I bought it. You see, this monitor fully supports USB-C connectivity and has 90 watts of power delivery. So if you're using a laptop, all you need to do is plug just a single USB-C cable into the laptop and you will get an external display charging at full speed, so just as quick as the charger brick that came with your device, and also access to any USB devices you have plugged into your monitor. The monitor also comes with inbuilt speakers, however, I do recommend using headphones or proper speakers because the inbuilt options on monitors are just never the best in terms of audio quality. Here's a quick overview of the ports. Starting from left to right, AC power, security lock, HDMI, display port, USB-C display port, audio line out, so for speakers if you use them, and two USB 3.1 ports. You also get this really useful USB-C and standard USB port on the side, which is great for plugging in USB drives or other accessories to your laptop without having to use an extra hub or cable or reach around to access the back of the monitor. I'll go into this in more detail when we get to this section about laptop usage. Next up, we have screen quality. Again, I won't go into the nitty gritty details, so do check out the link in the description and have a read through the technical specifications if you want. But my personal experience has been very positive. Whether I'm using Windows or Mac OS, including either a Mac mini or a MacBook, the colors are just super bright very accurate, and being able to see everything at a 4K resolution means that you can barely see any individual pixels. I've also had no issues with any blurriness or hard to read font. Viewing angles are also very impressive as it's an IPS panel and is also anti-reflective coated. It's a 60 hertz refresh rate, so you won't be doing any hardcore FPS gaming. 
However, it's totally fine for a bit of gaming here and there, and I've played games such as Fortnite without any issues. Now, I use this screen primarily for productivity tasks and also video editing. It works great for productivity because coming from a 1440p and 1080p panels, I found that using a screen with a higher resolution such as 4K is slightly less strain on my eyes and everything seems clearer and easier to tell apart. You can also go into the settings of your device and change the scaling, which means you can make text and icons larger or smaller to suit your preference. This works on both Mac OS and Windows. I also like it for video editing as I seem to get a really accurate color out of the monitor and I can play back my videos in full 4K resolution before I render them. Moving on to what is in my opinion the most important section and that is using this screen with a laptop. Okay guys, so I thought I would do a quick little real life test here for you. So right now I've got a M1 MacBook Air and I'm just gonna see how it works with this monitor. So screen, wake time, compatibility, plugging stuff in, all that kind of stuff. Now this does work exactly the same no matter whether you're using a M1 MacBook or an older Mac. I've tested this for the 2017 MacBook Pro, all the new M1 Macs and even some Windows devices and it all works pretty much the exact same. So first things first, let's open up my MacBook Air and we'll plug in the Dell monitor and you'll see that it is actually fairly quick to wake the screen, sort of get up and using it. Um, so it's probably about four to five seconds, probably even less. You can see right there, we are ready to go and there's absolutely zero issues. Now, if you guys are wanting to use a wireless keyboard and mouse with a MacBook, all you need to do is just close the screen and then if the particular monitor you're using goes to sleep, just click your mouse and your keyboard, your wireless mouse and keyboard a few times. So press a few buttons or click the mouse a few times and it will wake and you'll be able to use it. Now, like I've said in this video, the really cool thing about this particular monitor is it acts as a USB dock and also a charger. So you can see here in the battery section, uh, we are fully charged. Uh, it charges just as quick as it does if you're using the 30 watt power brick with the MacBook Air or the 60 watt with the Pro. So what we'll do now is we'll actually plug in an external drive. So I've just got a T5, a Samsung T5 SSD here. And if we actually do a disk speed test, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna test it, first of all, plugged directly into the MacBook and then plugged into the dock to see if we can get any kind of differences in the speed. So if I select the T5 SSD in Blackmagic Disk Speed Test, so again, this is plugged directly into the Mac itself, and you can see we're getting around 340 megabytes per second write speed, and the read speed is gonna be something similar, so it's gonna be around 380. Um, so again, not the fastest, this isn't exactly like a high-end drive, uh, but that's really all most people are ever going to need. So what we'll do is we will stop that. And then now we're going to unplug the drive from the Mac and we're going to plug it into the monitor. Okay, so that's plugged in and we'll just test that it is coming up. Yes, it is. We can see it right there. So remember 340 megabytes per second write and 380 for read. So let's... Make sure we've got it selected, we do, and start. Okay, so you can see right off the bat, it's it does lose a little bit of speed. So we're losing about 30 or 40 megabytes per second write speed. And then we're losing around the same for the read speed, so around 70 to 80 megabytes per second. Now that's definitely not a huge change. I don't think you'll necessarily even notice that. Uh, bear in mind, you actually have to come into the settings of the screen and you actually have to change the USB-C prioritization to high data speed over high resolution, because if you've got high resolution selected, you're probably only gonna get about 30 or 40 megabytes per second read and write speed off whatever you've got connected. But if you change this to high data speed, you'll be able to almost max out the speed of whatever you're plugging into the screen. But again, guys, if you have like a really high-end drive, you're probably not gonna want to plug it into the screen. You'll probably wanna plug it into the Mac. But for everything else, it's totally fine just using the inbuilt USB-C hub on this monitor. Anyway, that's it from me for now. Let's get back into the video. 
Now, in terms of price, this is probably the main negative of this monitor. You can easily pick up a basic 4K monitor from other cheaper brands at much lower cost. Now, I wouldn't class the Dell U2720Q as a budget option, but I also don't believe it's too expensive for what it is either. Many of the cheaper 4K monitors out there either have no USB-C functionality, meaning you can't even charge or even connect your laptop unless you use a HDMI or DisplayPort cable and a converter, or are just plain ugly looking or made with really cheap components. I've been using Dell UltraSharp monitors for both in the office at my 9 to 5 job and also at home for about 5 years now and I've never been let down. Dell also has a pretty good warranty as well and one way to also think about it is that you're not just getting a screen but a hub and also a charger. You also get all the cables you need in the box as well. In conclusion, the Dell U2720Q is a really high quality monitor with awesome build design and comes with all the ports, cables and functionality you could ever need from a monitor, but it can be a little pricey. At the end of the day though, if I'm going to be staring at a screen for 8 plus hours a day, I want to invest in something that's going to work well and that I'm going to enjoy looking at and that's why after a lot of research, I settled on this particular Dell monitor and almost two months later, I'm still very happy with my decision and I think you will as well. If you are interested in checking it out, make sure you do check the link in the description. Anyway guys, thanks for watching this video. Hope I answered some of your questions or shed some light on this particular monitor. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. But apart from that, I will catch you guys in the next one.